Hi guys, I'm at uh, Trio Smart Cal again with Charles. I'm in the Cal Lab. Hey, and um, he's got my uh, my Fluke um, 59 Mini IR thermometer that you saw in the previous video. And uh, he's got. While I'm here, I thought I'd uh, check it out and uh, calibrate it. He's got one of these Xtech um, IRC 350 black body radiation units. Can you tell us about it, Charles? You've got a very high emissivity area here and uh, it heat, this one's set at the moment to get to 50 degrees so we just wait till it warms up when it gets to 50 degrees um, set your thermometer to about uh, 95 to 98 percent of acidity somewhere in that region well it's a fixed it, this one's a fixed one okay. it's, it's fixed to 95 so okay, well that's, yeah. that's, that's that's pretty common at the moment the temperature there at the yep. moment is 46 so it's going up and it'll stabilize so uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes how do you get this thing traceably cowed who do you send it to? How do you uh, traceably um, calibrate this sucker? Really? Actually, we do it ourselves. Oh, all right. Yeah, we, okay. We, we probably, I don't know, you'd have to ask, oh, the, okay. lab. You'd have yeah. to ask the lab manager. Right. Yeah. You're going to have to leave it to stabilize. Yep. I've never driven this before. <laughs> there so you we'll go. see how good the user look. <laughs> 1955 was a good year. That's a 55 degrees. 55 degrees. All right, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I don't know what sort of term controller it's got in there. One term, two term, three term. But, so. Yeah. Well, it's going up. What are we reading at the moment? 58.8 and it's currently 57.3 so does it make a difference if you move it back and forth? Uh, it'll read low if you move it back. Right okay so you've got they, to put... Well these, these things are a measure a point source Yep. and they've got a lens. Yes. So a bit yep. like with a thermal camera you're focusing uh, an object onto a Mm. basically a plane where you're going to have an image and yep. if you the further back you come then uh, yeah this one's yeah, got an see, 8 to see, 1 ratio well, it now, yeah it's got an 8 it's, to 1 ratio if you see on the uh, top so it's there now, it's, it's now measuring 55 now and if I come back here well, a lot of people eight. think as long as they get the laser no, no. in the right point I mean, that's what they're measuring. Yeah. We're actually saying 35 degrees now. Yeah, no, because it's uh, the average area would be like this big now or something like that. So it's getting, so it's averaging over the whole area of that. So 59. So but the, these thermometers use about plus or minus two or three two, percent. Yeah, it? this one's uh, spec'd at plus minus two degrees. And this thing hasn't stabilized yet either. No, so okay. We usually leave it for about an hour or so to stabilize. Right, yeah, we just, just switched it on then, so. Yeah. Okay. What's probably happened is it's got a, it'll have a multi term controller in it, so it'll go up, it'll overshoot, it'll come down, it'll get corrected, yep. and then uh, it'll stabilize. Yep. So we come back in about an hour, it'll be right. Got it. Well, we'll come back. And just a matter of interest, so you put your finger there, you actually feel there's an airflow. Oh yeah, there's actually air there. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it blows, so it, it that helps stabilize the front temperature, I guess. Well, if it's going to drop down in temperature, okay. it's going to turn a fan on. Yeah, I, I think the spec is two percent plus minus two degrees. <laughs> two percent of two percent of hundred is two, so fifty degrees. You've got to be out by one plus your two degrees. So you could yep. you could be out three degrees yes, at this I, level. You could I, be out yes, three degrees. Certainly. Yeah, look, I'm on hold. Because it's it's only a cheap. I mean, this yeah. is the uh, this one's only sold in China. You won't find this on the Fluke okay. American website. Yeah. This is only for the Chinese market. So it's this probably, Fluke it's, it's probably a, a rebadged um, one that's sold by half a dozen other brands as well. I suspect. Or made in the same factory. I, well, I haven't seen another one that's identical to this. There are a lot of rebadged ones out there, but uh, this one, uh, it's, I love the, um, if you pop out, pop the, uh, if you push that off, if you can pull that off, that's the battery cover. It's really uh, quite nice. That's I love nice, the, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. how the air's yeah. got a new Celsius, uh, Celsius degree nice. switch on there. It's got some test pads down in there for, uh, that's obviously for oh, testing yeah, for and or. Just in production, yeah. Yeah. It's quite a nice unit. It only costs like, 50 bucks or something so it is more expensive than your regular um, yeah. cheap ones but it is a fluke so I figured you know it would uh, be a bit better quality and it does feel much better quality than the uh, cheap ones anyway so I don't mind it at all. I'll go and get an X tech and we'll compare them if you like. <laughs> Why not? All right guys we're back and uh, it's settled at 55 degrees and we've decided to get the Fleur E60 and check out the temperature range oh it's going from 27.7 to 56.3 this scale and it's saying it's 55.5 that's in the center but if we move, yeah. move slightly over to the side 56 yeah. yeah and we move slightly over there you can actually see that you can there see is the a profile slight, a slight change if we have a look across there so at the bottom yeah. we've got 
55.3. Yep. We've got uh, 55.2 up there. We've got uh, 55.8 over there. And 56.1 in that corner, so the heater must be in that corner. And the uh, Fleur E60 has a resolution of what, 0.06 it's or something? 0 .0 8, 0 0.06, 0 0.08 of a, right. of a degree. That's what it's capable of detecting uh, yep. a difference. In fact, you can even see the slight changes in the surface because of irregularities in the surface. There. Yeah. And if we move in, we may even be able to get a bigger well, range. Well, we're going to be, we're actually at the, <laughs> we're the at limit the focal, of the, the minimum yep. focal distance at the moment. So, although focus shouldn't matter. Though if well, we we're just going to swamp. We're just yeah, gonna, we're, we're, we're going to swamp, swamp it. But you can see the range change from 56 to 54 now. So there's only yeah, well, a two it's degree got, range. That's four degree. Oh, four. There's a four degree range there. So. And so the colours are actually representing. Yep. Four degrees. So that the, the the light blue is uh, down mm -hmm. at 54 and the, the brighter yeah, orange. Yeah. So maybe so there is, the there focus. Is, we can see there is a difference in uh, temperature across that surface. That's interesting, look at that. It looks like it's sun, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Using this colour scheme. Yeah, yes, yeah, we can change. I think it's on Ar I think it's on Arctic or something. Yeah. But of course, with these thermometers, you're mm. actually not measuring lots and lots of individual points. You're actually no, measuring just an average the average over, temperature across yep. this. Yes, so across the surface at the yeah. focal length. So mine's now saying 55.6. Six, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'm very happy with that. Or is this thing? And this thing, what have we got here? We've got a um, X-Tech. It's a medical IR thermometer. Medical IR thermometer. So it's designed for a very small range, like the, you know, from zero to 60, I think is on the box. So um, it's designed to give instant readings of your body temperature. And uh, it does. Shouldn't, um, you want to give it a go yeah. on your okay. forehead, Charles? Here we have a, mod a model <laughs> oh, <well>. hand. <laughs> give it a go. And it reads it in like a second. It's great. Oh, it's in surface mode at the moment, I yeah, think. It is. It's yeah. in surface mode, yeah, but it's also got a body mode. So if you switch, yeah, there it is. Switch body mode on. I wonder if I can get a new body if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give body mode a try. And 36 degrees. Yeah. Well, that's on your hand, yeah. If you want to try it on your forehead, it's supposed to work on your forehead, isn't it? <laughs> move, move the hair. 36.8. 36 36 You're pretty, alive. Pretty good. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 And now let's try it on here. Surface mode. Yeah, surface mode. 55.2. Check it out. Yeah. 52. No. That's it's because uh, of the, yeah. the, 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 the lens has to be really, yeah, this one's, this one's actually designed to be on the surface of something. Very it's not. It's, within, I think it's within 100 millimeters. Uh, right, right, 100 millimeters. Okay. Whereas a regular IR thermometer is uh, designed to work it any distance based on its uh, ratio. So we're getting 55.2 on that one. So yep. That's nice. Wow. Oh. This, this palette is called Rainbow High Contrast. Okay, so it's a high contrast mode, so we should so see it much better. Rainbow High Contrast, yeah. So what's the total differential temperature so across the plate? The, the hottest there? point over there is 56.4, uh, according yep. to this. Bear in mind, we, don't, we haven't checked the calibration of this thermal yep. camera. Um, the coolest area would be probably there. Yeah. And we've got 54.7, that sort of thing. Yeah, about 54.7. Mm -hmm. So there is actually uh, quite a difference across this. Now, whether yep. the surface has been cleaned and, or somebody's tried wiping it and changed the emissivity of the surface, that would also affect it. Yeah, of course. But, uh, and we don't know what the absolute accuracy of the E60 is either. So. I'm not sure. Are oh, you? I'd have to go and look up yeah, the spec sheet. Have to look I the can't menu. remember. That's one of these. The high contrast mode. Yeah, actually, that, that works really well. It's actually well. the first time I've played with that. I just saw it. I knew it was in there, but I've just never found a reason to use it before. That's terrific. I love these Fleur E60s. They're oh, great. They're the best. Yeah. Only you know $12,000. You, know, well, you know it's got wireless and Bluetooth as <laughs> It's well. got wireless and Bluetooth, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot and, to mention and, that in my and, video, actually. There's apps that you can get to run on your Android or your, uh, your iPhone. Ah, there you go, for those uh, wankers who you know, want to hmm. hook it up to their uh, iPad. Yeah. And we're using this one again to actually check the surface map um, to see if it corresponds to the Fleur E60. It seems to uh, do it uh, pretty well. That's the cool 
area over there and then you go to the hot part and it's 50 and it is actually warmer. Cool down here. Yeah. Yeah, it seems right, to correspond. It warmer there. It was, I think. There you go. It corresponds yeah. to the map. And in the center. And the center is, we're probably going to get a bit of average in there. 55.6. Yeah. yeah. So this thermometer is reading slightly high or else the emissivity is not set. Yep. It, this thing's probably fixed. I mean, I haven't read the instructions, but mm. I would suspect it's got its emissivity fixed for human skin. Yes, I would say so, of course. Because that's what it's designed that's, for. Yep. And the emissivity of this is going to be different. Yep. This is actually going to have a better emissivity mm -hmm. than human skin has. So consequently, um, this will actually be changing the temperature readings to uh, yep. compensate for that. So, and well, this is going to be near perfect, isn't it? This is going to be, going to be as close, yeah. near a two. Well, it's, a... it's matte. It's matte black. Yep. Yeah. So, so but so, but the, so, that does seem to map and correspond to the yeah, E60. It, yeah, so that's because, great because the emissivity actually yep. changes the temperature. So if you have a a low would it change over that narrow range? Well, though? see, a low a low emissivity, yeah, a, a low emissivity um, surface. Um, will not obviously radiate as much heat. Mm -hmm. So consequently, to get, actually get the temperature of it, the scaling actually increases the reading on the thermometer mm. to compensate for the lack of heat coming out. Got it. Right. So uh, if, you, and if you touch it, it'll be much better. The best demonstration is to get an old baked bean can, take, take the label off, yeah. paint, paint half of it matte black and leave the other half shiny. We've got one upstairs. <laughs> and actually look at the temperature of both sides with an infrared thermometer uh -huh. and then with a surface contact thermometer. And that's what we do when we show people thermal cameras. Got it. Yep. So that's why we've that's got a half, demo, a half right. painted baked bean can. But it <laughs> you works use a baked bean well. can you, demo. You just, you just put hot right. water in the baked bean can and you, yeah. can, and you can see the, the shiny side and yep. the uh, matte, nice. matte surface and you know that they're at the same temperature because it's hot water inside. <laughs> so that's what we use as a demo. Brilliant. But that matches nicely so with the, the map, so I'm, yeah, I'm pretty does, impressed yeah. with that. But as I say, there will be the slight correction it, for the of course. Yeah. Yep, that's neat. All right, Charles, give us a breakdown. Okay, um, before we do my little uh, idiot's guide to thermal cameras, I'm just gonna have a quick plug for um, a club that I'm a member of, which is actually a drinking club with a running problem. It's called the Hash House Harriers. And if anybody ever wants to have a bit of fun, go join the Hash House Harriers. You might end up having to do some exercise, but you get a drink. Nice Christmas. Okay, um, what we have is a Fleur E60 thermal camera. Uh, detector array is um, 320 by 240. Mm -hmm. And we, ju we were just comparing this to a low cost camera that had a much smaller detector array and the images weren't that different. Yep. Now I just want to cover something here that uh, people need to consider when looking at thermal cameras. What a thermal camera is, is basically lots and lots and lots of point thermometers in an array. So if you can imagine lots and lots and lots in a big square array of lots of dots, that's how you build up your thermal picture. Etc. Etc. Now sitting over here is a lens, and the lens is made of germanium, so mm -hmm. you can't see through it, but the heat can, and this, this is basically a piece of germanium lens. Now what happens is the infrared comes in, and it's focused onto this plane, same as you would get with a normal light, so it's focused in there. Now depending on what characteristics the lens has, is depending on just what area out here is actually focused onto the array. So when you're choosing a camera, just a quick mm -hmm. one and just to explain why a very low cost camera at a certain distance could give a, a picture equivalent to a more expensive camera, is that the low cost camera has actually got a very small field of view because right. its lens doesn't have the wider capture range of the lens on this piece. Mm -hmm. What that does though, is when you have got the, the wider lens, you can obviously see over a larger area. So when you're looking at things like switchboards, etc., you want to see the whole picture. You don't have to walk way back and then lose all the definition in your image. You can go in more closely. And that's the got reason it. that the two cameras um, with much differing detector sizes can actually give you a similar picture at the distance we were looking at, where it was only about mm -hmm. maybe 10 centimeters. Got it. Okay. Brilliant. Awesome. That's, that's it. It's Thanks, Charles. Dreadful drawing. 